Here we are once again with the Luxman 5C50 preamplifier. Today we're taking a look at the most common problem with these Luxman preamplifiers and a few other Luxman devices. And that is the DML chip. So we're going to take it apart and take a look at it. Here we have the DML chip. This is a DML02. And there are supposed to be four of those in this unit. But as we can see, here's only one. So there's supposed to be one here, one here, and one here. So this section is the equalizer for the phono input. So these are not always used. These two are for the general preamplifier part, and they are always used. So these are more critical for the functionality, but these are only used for the phono input. And you can see that these two have already been replaced with discrete component circuit boards. And the reason for that is that these ICs are really poorly made and they broke even a long time ago when this was fairly new. So these two have been replaced probably a long time ago. So these ICs are really hard to find. And I'm guessing that is because not many of them have survived. So buying new DML ICs are out of the question. So luckily we have these two circuits here. And my plan is to desolder these and take a look at what components they used and then we will try to replicate this PCB. So here we found the power wires taped to the PCB, not connected. So probably, as these ICs were going bad, they maybe shorted the system or something, and they fixed it by detaching the power source from the equalizer section. So hopefully it will be enough to replace this IC and put one here as well. Otherwise we'll have to do some further troubleshooting. Anyway, here's one of the PCBs that we will take a look at. So we'll start by desoldering this one. It's usually a good idea to add a bit of fresh solder to the old solder joint to make it easier to remove. Here we have the DML replacement circuit, and here I've listed the components used. So the first one is this big component here, that is a dual field effect transistor. Now one benefit of having two transistors in one package like this one, is that they will have the same temperature. And as temperature varies, the transistor characteristics will change as well. And if you have the same temperature on both field effect transistors, they will vary by the same amount. Then we have two 2SC1345E and two 2SA8360D. Then we have a few resistors with 5% tolerance. Now since the Luxman 5C50 uses a direct coupled amplifier configuration, you will have to handle the DC drift that occurs due to temperature changes and humidity changes and other things like that. And that is the purpose of the DML circuit. So I found that some of these components are quite hard to find and can be quite pricey. So before ordering the components, I want to make sure that the rest of the circuit is working. So now I want to make sure that the equalizer section is working. And since I have two of these cards that I know are working, I will be able to place two of them on the left channel and then change them to the right channel. And by doing so I will make sure that the only thing that is broken is the DML circuits. I would also like to know if this DML circuit is working, because as we saw, the power was disconnected to this whole section, which means that this DML circuit could actually have survived all this time. So we will start by reattaching the power leads to the equalizer section. The PCB holes for the original IC is too small for the new one. It has thicker legs, so we'll have to widen them slightly. Ah. 
So I move these DML circuits around a bit and it seems that the surrounding components here are working. And to my surprise this old DML circuit is working too. So this is what I think happened. The DML IC for the left channel broke and it started making noise. And they thought, well we're not going to use the phono input anyway. So they just removed the IC. And removing an IC in the middle of a circuit is kind of a bad idea because notes can be floating and, and you don't know what's going to happen unless you study the circuit. So I'm guessing this didn't fix the noise problem. So they decided to just pull the plug on the whole equalizer section by removing the power. And so for the rest of this unit's lifetime this DML circuit has been unplugged and therefore it has survived all these years. So now we'll try to replicate this PCB and get the components we need. So we start by measuring it. Twenty seven times seventeen millimeters. Now we'll take a picture of it. So, using this information, I will try to recreate the layout of this PCB. Here we have the layout of the DML2 PCB. So all I did here was to draw on top of the photo I took of the DML PCB. So now we'll use the measurement to rescale this to the right size, so we can use it as the edge mask. So here we have the layout in its proper size. So what I'm going to do is to transfer this onto a copper clad, and the ink will then protect from the etching agent, and it will only etch away the copper where there's no ink. So if you look closer you can see that this is mirrored and that is because when we transfer it to the PCB clad it will be mirrored back. Here's a piece of copper clad that we're going to transfer the ink onto. So we'll start by preparing the copper clad for ink transfer. We'll use a bit of steel wool to scratch it. And then we'll clean it with some alcohol. By using two pieces of paper tape together like this, we just slide in the PCB clad and make sure that the ink area is covering the PCB clad. So for the transfer we're going to use heat. And I'm doing it with this slightly modified laminator that outputs a little bit more heat than usual. And then I'm also going to use an ion. Now after a few runs through the laminator, we can cut off the sides so it will go faster. We will let it soak in water for a few minutes. Now it's ready for etching. Here we have the finished PCBs, etched, tinned and drilled. Let's compare it to the original replacement PCB. The 
looks pretty similar. So now let's mount the components. So here we have all the components we need to recreate the DML02. The components here are arranged in the order they appear on my list. This first component, dual field effect transistor, was quite hard to find. It seems to be two TO92 packages inside a metal casing. So these two field effect transistors we see here are probably matched and when they are in a metal casing like this they will more or less share the same temperature. So these brass pins were a bit trickier to get hold of than I thought. I was hoping you could buy these brass pins at an arbitrary length and then just cut them to your needs. But I couldn't find any so I had to buy this board to board pin header and extract the pins from it. But now we have everything we need, so let's mount the PCB.